for everything. Thank you, Father God, a lot for all that there is. And I just want to say thank you so much for sending the Holy Prophet to Ali and ordaining him so that he could deliver this everlasting gospel. So we can get things together and save ourselves. I want to give honors to your Holy Prophet. Allah, and all of the divine prophets, peace and blessings be upon all of them. I want to give honors to Prophet Noble Ali, the savior of the Asiatic race, our Messiah sent to get us back our, to our forefathers, divine and national creed, ETC. I want to give honors to the prophet for establishing or preparing the divine instructions known as the Holy Quran of the Moorish Science Temple of America. I want to give honors to the prophet for establishing the more scientific of America, divine constitution and bylaws. I want to give honors to the additional laws that the prophet established in our Quran questionnaire. I want to give honors to the Quran questionnaire, which has our historical genealogy, our authority and our law. I want to give honors to the flags, of the Moorish Science Temple of America, the, all, the old glory, the red, white, and blue flag of our birth, where we have been redeemed. I want to give honors to that flag. I want to give honors to our, the flag of the Moorish Science Temple of America, or Moorish Americans, the all red flag with the five pointed green star in the center. Those five points representing love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. I want to give honors to all the members of the Moore Science Temple of America, especially here at Temple Number 43, subordinate Temple Number 43, want to give honors to all of you for your Sunday civics course, praise Allah. And I want to give honors to all of the officials here at the Moore Science Temple of America, working diligently at the subordinate Temple Number 43. Praise Allah for you. All right, and I want to give honors to whom honors are due. All right. Okay, uh, you know, I'm gonna go over a few things. Hopefully they become extremely, you know, of interest to you. All right. As you can see the world today, as we were kind of speaking on Friday, I believe, right? Going over a little bit of the prophecy, a little understanding there. We're gonna look at Look at that today. It's a little bit, then move on into the, uh, well, it's part of the whole lesson, actually. So the world today is lining up with exactly what the prophet told us over 100 years ago. Let's just say from the time of 1913 to 1929, the prophecies were going there. But when I was a kid, please put your mic on So in that, right, because you can't have a prophet without prophecies like that. I mean, it just goes hand in hand, right? So in that, we look for the accuracy and we look why, so that we can strengthen our faith. You know, we look for the, uh, the commonality of the prophecies against the current events of today. And as we can all tell since 2020, you know, um, things have been rapidly changing. Now things are becoming, should be, should be, if you are paying attention, a little bit more clear. Players on the field now. And then reflecting in what the Prophet Noble Juali has spoken about so that you can see your position in this new world approaching so ever rapidly. For those that don't consider the approaching new world, then they get left behind and they become useless to the new world. Prophet Noble Juali gave us a head start, major head start of the And with these fundamental principles to make ourselves better citizens, to bring ourselves, those who were Asiatics and took the fall and lost nationality during the time of slavery, because you know that's what happens when you were a child in slavery, because that they killed off the elders, kidnapped the children, gathered them around. 
and told all the children that they was Negroes, Negus, ETC. So from there, losing nationality, right? We understand what that means today. It also means losing allegiance. It means losing a standing status. That also means losing, if it's nationality, it means your political rights that tie to your uh, political status, which ties to the nation in which those statuses are being protected. That also failed, all right? So then we taken on uh, ideologies of what is really corporate social classism evidence or stat, uh, ways called Black Latino. These are corporate, second class citizen, right? But these are corporate constructs, right? And uh, of, of slavery. Or let's just say that we're moved into this form of it today as a topic warned, it's called mental slavery. All right? So when we're contemplating what's going on, why am I here? Uh, are these things and what's my position in the world? Where is this world going? Who is looking a little crazy? The money is falling. Prophet did say that. All these things. Well, it is natural to get a little apprehensive and to have a certain sense of what we'll just utilize that term called fear. But it's not, it's ill, it's not natural to stay in that state. And the only way you relieve fear of the future or fear of what this the world is being put under a pressure cooker right now right, is for you to understand your place in it. And, right, for you to understand the place in which you once existed compared to the place in now which you're coming against what you are now perceiving in the real world. This gives you the tools needed so that you can go out here and make correct decisions called choices. Choices put everybody in positions either good or bad. And when people understand how to make the most healthiest choice, right, to get that percentage up to where you are like in the 90s to your choice is going to be healthy for you, your family and others around you, is to have a concrete understanding of not only who you are, but where are you and what is my position in the things going on around me? And do I have enough power to implement change not only in my life, but the immediate situation? See, this is what this gives us, is a clear understanding of that, which I just said, is a clear understanding of what's going on around us, farsightedness. So we don't get feeling fear creep up in many different ways and comes out anger. See, fear comes out in anger sometimes when you get that fear, you know, and you're kind of by yourself or, you know, others don't really understand who you, what you're going through or maybe your parents or maybe the people around you really think you're in a cult or all these particular things. Yeah, we all have to go through that. You understand? But it does not negate the facts that what you are going through is 100% real. See, we have to get into our minds too. Like the Prophet Noble Duali told us not to be out there confounding other people's sin because only the sheep are going to hear the call today. So you ain't going to wake up everybody. Thank Allah that you were woken up. I was, I, I praise Allah every single day I was woken up. But now to become aware and on top of that, to become See, it's not uh, enough to be awoke. It's, you got to be aware at the exact same time, and you have to have the knowledge of self with that. You see, all this is now coming back on. It's kind of rushed because of the ethers out here, Shay. So it can cause a sense of apprehensiveness and people looking for the quick and the real quick way to get it done. No, there's only one way to get it done, and that's the for sure way, not the quick way, the for sure way. So in civics, that the our Prophet Noble Juwali established an entire organization on uh, making men and women better citizens, teaching nationality and divine creed. So that what? So that you can do what? So that you can rule the world, really, to keep it 100, right? But then first you must rule ourselves. We must rule our own government, right? So that's what we kind of doing here because we were unruly to the, these laws. Everybody, I hate the United States of America and all the, and then, you know what? Okay, you, you just like the people out there pushing it. But there ain't nothing wrong with that constitution when you really look at it and you understand the position in which it was founded. And now, but look at your constitution. Even better than to me, the better than the one that they put together. You know what I'm saying? But still, uh, that declaration is still off the hook where it, all men are created equal. 
And now that we understand these positions here in society, I mean, we can get our thing together. Stop worrying about what they think, what they're doing, and stop worrying about, are you going to get caught up in the storm? No, you're not. If you do the correct things that the Prophet Noble Juwali is telling you to do, like we have all, like we, some of us have done and continue to do, then you are just the same. Once you get to mingling things and get to thinking that thing over there says all that and thinking, you know, you get to mingling a little bit prior to you get your understanding, then that's where certain people's issues come about. And when they mix in what they feeling, well, you know, and, and, and the Bible's all that, and the Tim was all that, why, why are we all still broke? Why are you still broke? <laughs> I mean, do you got bad spending habits? See, the temple teach you, teaches you nationality, which also teaches you economics. And through economics, guess what? Thrift. You, you want, let me show you how the prophet taught that. Hold on really quick. So let's go hear from the prophet, Ju Ali. And since we're all children, it's in the form of uh, the civics part, no matter how old we are, with, you know, we children coming up into the house of Allah because it was ordained from Allah for number Ju Ali to build this. Right? So it's good that we get our manners together. See, sometimes you need to look at it like that. You're about to walk into something glorious. But you got to get glorious too. Everybody been hurt. <laughs> I mean, how many times are we gonna go through that one? Yep, we all been hurt, and some of us still going through some pain. That's right. And guess what we're doing though? We're not waddling in the pain anymore. We're actually realizing the tools to go beat back and go deflate the pain. And one of those things is to confront instead of. Money, eating your way out of it, having sex your way out of it, drug, drug, drug try to drug your way out of it. <laughs> All that didn't work, did it? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So the only thing left is to confront it, <laughs> right? And that was the only thing to do in the beginning. It's never healthy to run from a situation, especially, you know, you, know, you never want to run, especially if it's in a riot. You are, the runner is always the one who ends up getting beat down. It's good to stand there and fight, right? And sometimes you have to fight with yourself. All right. So uh, let's see here. What does the prophet tell us about economics and our civics and some of the things I was just speaking of? Let me see. Let's see if I can find that. There it is. And then we're going to go right into it. All right. So this is um, round up. Let's see here, this is 1928. All right, December 20th, 1928, founding of the uh, Young People's Morris League, Young Fellows, members of all Morris Science Temples of America. All right, let's look in here to see if it's kind of relevant for us today. So the Prophet Noble Juwali allowed this to go out. He was the editor, but this was actually written by Juanita Richardson Bay, the secretary and treasurer of the Young Fellow, uh, the Young People's Morris League. All right, so, here we go. so it's Islam, Young Fellow Members of All More Science Temples of America. The time has come when the young people of all More Science Temples of America must prepare themselves to help carry on the work of the prophet and the great Moorish movement now and in the future. By our words and deeds, we must stand for the obligation of duty, the power of unity, the strength of our constructive cooperation, the wisdom of thrift and economy, and the value of time in improving ourselves by greater attendance at day or evening literary and trade schools in the communities in which we live. Nothing brings greater rewards of happiness than useful service in our chosen fields of work. Useful service among the young men, women, boys, and girls of all more science temples is the purpose of the Young People's Morris League. 
And we want all Moorish American children and young men and women up to the age of 30 years to join the league and help to make it the greatest organization of young people in the world. All right, join today, join now, for there is no joining fee at this time, but there will be later. Islam, you can kind of read that on. Right, so I've said that before, I think I said last week, but I want to reiterate something here. Right, it is very important that we begin to learn how to run our own everything, like the prophet is demonstrating, right? And then transfer this to a well uh, integrated, part of the of children's education coming out. Right? Because without it, they're going to be thinking everybody else's stuff is better than theirs. It's like we did. Right? Always looking for someone else to, you know, someone else's things. Right? And it starts with the youth. And within there in our community, just like you, we uh, they treat rock stars in, in that old dead community. And hip hop stars, we're gonna start treating the youth and the smart scientists. Put them on camels, make them rock stars. You understand? Sick of sick of up there screaming for somebody, then you look under the cover and they are a child molester, or they drank some blood, are they into some witchcraft? Are they doing something weird to get famous in that weird old world? So why do I have to constantly look for that when truly? What should be held up is someone who cured cancer. That's the rock star. <laughs> now, the artists who can sing good, okay. Hey, man. And all that, not trying to take no dreams away, but could we balance the scales? Could we balance the scales also? Right? Where that per particular person uh, made an ingenuity or engineered a rail system within our district now the world wants. And now we sell our engineering to the world like the Chinese does. See, we're so far behind, we can't see it. What we got to sell? Well, you understand what's really going on? Everybody's breaking back to their vine and fig tree, people. Can you not see it? Everybody, the United of Asia, like I told you, it's happening. And those who don't have skills, those who don't uh, conform under their government that was sent for them, is going to be left out around the world. And this is not a joke. Peep out. Brazil, everyone wants to, now they all get their own currency. They're no longer dealing in dollars. They all look in their backyard, pricing how much their natural commodity resources are. Told you guys about this months ago. It's called commodity money. Everybody said, what about the dollar bill, though? <laughs> dollar bill crashing. Probably said, you're going to look up, you know, you're going to see $20 bill and you ain't going to do nothing. People are going to burning money in the street. Well, thank Allah for the Prophet Jew Ali who's got the gold and silver under our truck in the ground. Because that's the best way you put it. Which means the commodities. So if you want to go do a detailed look, which I get the book, give a detailed look of that time, as we all know, if he says he's got the vast estate back, well, that vast estate, and I've told you before, it's an A mandate. Go look up what World War I was about. Well, well, one was the breaking up of the Ottoman Empire. Well, come on now. Now do a little bit of history, and that's you. All right, so now probably showed up on the right on time, in time, when they were figuring out what to do with the parts of North America. Here comes the landowner. You understand? Now, it was so fantastic back then to us, or those brothers and sisters back then. Maybe not all of them, because if you really read the Moorish guy, boy, they were witty. They were smart. These brothers had businesses, laundry mats, lawyers, all sorts of things they had popping. So what happened? And everybody wanted to be a pimp, sell dope on, to their own, and, and start to glorify that. What happened to glorifying the brother just got the business down the street, holding him up like, bro, how you do that? See, I have to flip over now. All right, so coming back to the civics part of all this, 
when we hear the prophet speaking directly to the youth, right? That is preparation. That is long lasting. That is seeing the future. See, too many times we got caught up with the European psychology. I'll kick them out at 19, 18, whatever. Oh, that's your life. <laughs> you know, some people were like that, but some people were. Well, them days is done. The child's got to grow up with a sense of understanding that even if he does fail a little bit early, that that doesn't mean stop. <laughs> the sense of invention again. Right. And we as the community, then we put and we find those particular individual children and individuals within the community. And then we put a fund under these particular ones to ensure they get the greatest of education. And what do we do? We ensure that they come back and create and work for the companies that we now build. And now we have our own Elon Musk. You know, where are we looking at him like he's something for like he's coming for you? I be hearing Negroes, ooh, Elon, Elon what? What you mean, ooh, Elon? When he ever did something, he put a, 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 a SpaceX directly in the hood and barely hired anybody from the hood. Where was the re-education centers to teach people about rocket ship building? Nah, where was that? But Negroes, ooh, Elon, no. Always ooh, Elon, because he, well, he got a little bread. Stop worshiping money. That is not a, a, a measurement of a person's capacity to be morally to look out for you. That's only your people going to look out for you. It is only our people who is going to ensure that we look out for the little children and raise geniuses in the hood by ensuring that the environment is conducive. And, and, and stop all this weird stuff and jealousies and, and all of, I, I don't want to work with that. Because, you know, well, shut up with that weird, weak stuff. We are now over here with real life changing events on the planet. We are over here now with real life ending events on the planet. And all those who are collectively under the mindset of a particular government that the Prophet Noble Ju Ali has established for us, is going to win because they know how to win. It's called, it's called knowing what you got. So anytime that our founder says that the youth are important, we better understand that and get his program back in action. It's not enough for even for us to say they're important. Where's the program? Where are the people behind the action? See, to love something, that means that we putting something in action. Building something where others thought maybe it couldn't. At what time do we care about what they say when we have instructions right here? That'd be half of our problem, always worrying about what they think. If you can quote your constitution, you start to think you're worrying about what you think. You heard the Declaration of Independence so dang much, you probably quote that. Bet you can halfway hum the Star Spangled Banner. Where's your hum for the, the Morris flag? Can you hum Act Six? Then make that to a song. All right, so praise Allah. Let's get let's let's get here because this is gonna get fun. I love this. There ain't nothing better on our planet than us waking up and coming back into our own. It takes a little work though. Takes us a, a shy, let our ego, first and foremost, calm down, ego, ego guy talking to yourself, like I do mean, calm down, nope. And you gotta be like, nope, and mean it. <laughs> nope. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Who's boss around here, Jack? I had to tell my ego the other day, you know what I'm saying? The low, man, you up in my dome. A lot dwells up in here. Who thoughts come from? Like Jesus on the mountain, you are the mountain, all right? So they even had a, a, a dues card. The prophet was so serious about the young people's more sleep, keeping things in order. Dues cards. 
I mean, if you really saw how government worked back in the early 1900s, remember Papa came on the scene in like 1911. <laughs> Dude, that's what, 11 years from 1900? <laughs> All right, so we're talking about if you really understood how governments had to cal calculate and hold their stuff and operate, Papa was right on time running. And he had a billion dollars street. People don't even, he thought he was broke. How could he do everything he did in the short period of time that he did with, with nothing? But he tells you how he even did it. Morris Manufacturing Company. Why? Because he was an expert in something. Th that takes me to this. Let's go here really quick. And uh, where is that? Um, hmm. So let me do this really quick. Oh, here it is right here. All right. So let me give you the general purpose and then we're gonna move into our part here. And then, so it doesn't have to be so long. Hey. All right, so general purpose, as you can read for yourself along with me, general purpose is course in citizenship is designed to teach the fundamental principles upon which our government is founded, love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice, including an insight into the social and economic elements upon which our civilization stands. Special emphasis is laid upon the meaning of religious liberty as interpreted by the founders of this republic and the larger relationship of the individual citizen to others and to this, to his government. Def defining loyalty and national responsibility in terms of citizenship, recognizing that an intelligent and informed people is a greater asset than are the unintelligent, uninformed, or misinformed, which a lot of people are today, and that no government can exist upon a plane higher than the moral character of its people. This is why you have that crime, you know what I'm saying? Because it is morality that sustained civilizations for 800 to 1,000 years, such as the, our last civilization was, you know, we after, well, we ran up in Europe in 711 and conquered all the way, right? So that means that we already had civilization prior to that. All right. So we ran up in there and conquered for on record, they say 800 years. But as you really dig deeper, it's like 1492 was really about 1610, the last more left. So that's a long time to be ruling. A thousand years. Right? And it was the moral understanding more than anything. And that, you know, of course, that sword and that mighty sword of moral understanding. All right, so moving on, we kind of went through these already. National defense, education and training, right? It's very, very important. Right of suffrage, kind of look at that already. Uh, oh, here we go. Here we go. Yeah, let's move here. Let's see about that. Let's see. Uh, I think I read this part will move me into the, oh yeah, I did, about the voting. So let me go in here. All right. So be beneficial to production. Industry, which all Moors need to be thinking like now, like Marcus Garvey on his industrious um, enterpriseness. He was the first, one of the very first multimillionaire enterprisers of our time, where it has not really been repeated to the prophet came who, was rolling with it, but I'm talking about with the ships and everything. But anyway, so be beneficial to production. Industry is essentially the subject of natural forces, the manipulation of natural materials to the use of mankind. I'm gonna stop right there. I'm gonna stop right there. Do you understand what they're saying right there? Anybody wanna elaborate, especially those who are in the business class? When they say natural forces. There's love, Greg. I'm it's, it's teaching us to not only just uh, take advantage of the resources that we have at hand, but to also encapsulate that within our community, you know, and teach those that are interested in those that, that uh, have an understanding on, on such things, you know, to uh, 
build, not just inside our community, but to, you know, those who want to uh, uh, invest in it from, from the outside. So with that being said, peace and love. All right, that's why I'm on here. Good, anybody else? The industry is essentially the subject of natural forces, the manipulation of natural material to, to the use of mankind. Anybody else want to comment on that? Islam, brother man, um, as a new member, um, definitely would like to chime in from um, an environment I live in, Big Island, Hawaii, and agriculture is the first thing that springs to my mind. So um, I just definitely would like to um, chime in um, that thought. Respect, Islam. Islam, respect. So the uh, agriculture is a natural force. And um, go ahead, give, so call them, yeah, who's got their, I can't see if your hand's raised because I have the uh, screen up. So. Not sure if you can hear me, it's not. Um, I just want to say industry, uh, speaking in terms of, I guess, commercial, is essentially the subjection of natural forces, meaning without the natural resources, um, there can be no trade or, you know, nothing, nothing moves without the natural resources. That's my message. That's right. You know, good answers, everybody. That's fine. Anybody else? Sister Miller. Islam. Sister Miller L. Islam, Grand Governor family. Um, so essentially, are you saying using our natural resource, because you said in reference to business, are you saying, uh, for example, let's say we have raw material, we have land that has a lot of uh dirt we can use that dirt or let's say prime example um brother alfonso just said he's on the island so island i think about you know my islands and i think about a major resource and salt you know to areas all around the world not just one nation but you can use that as a salt business if you have dirt um a yard with a lot of dirt you can pack that up and actually sell that to um sell that to different companies, major companies that need the influential and that, you know, gives the Moorish community essentially leverage um, plants, fruit, vegetables, you know, they have um, one that I ordered from that comes directly from the islands because there's a lot of uh, natural fruit that isn't here. So what he was doing essentially was boxing up fruit, selling it to people around the US and then would use that money to build up certain parts of Africa and on the islands. I mean, many other parts, but using, you know, agriculture and nature around us and bending it to our will so that we can gain capital for the Moorish community, Islam. Islamism, that was great. Islam, I'm gonna talk on all of them that I really like what I'm hearing. <laughs> Anybody else? She could be. She could be. Islam, I would say anytime I see New possibilities are just a breakdown. I always look at things from a analytical eye of a of a national, and I would say that we will be the ones. We talk about subjugation, the ones that are on top of this chain and delegating things out to to people that may not have the same status that are all involved in the industry that we may be partaking in. Slump. Yes. Yes, sir. That's right, bro. That was pretty good. She, the, uh, talking on what everyone said, kind of pushing it together. Everyone was right. Okay. So, uh, one thing I didn't hear, but still hearing some very good stuff. Right. And we're going to deal with it right now. But one of our best natural resources is our children. It's children. All right. Because it is a force. Like it says here, it's a natural force. And it's actually a natural force that could be with the lessons that we have especially in the 12 step, you know, teach them religion, science, uh, temperament, prudence, you know, uh, obedience and these particular things, right? What does that really do? Well, as a natural resource, it teaches that one to have respect and loyalty to the government in which they live, right? Which means they're going to be that much more conducive to want to maybe invent or to get organized even that better to make it, you see what I'm saying? So that's one of the things, and how do we do that is to make sure our institutions are conducive to that type of environment. 
You understand? So that is very big, right? And also produce, and it makes family. Family is very important that we get back to the nuclear family. No matter how much we've been bent, damaged, uh, you know what I'm saying, heart broke, you know, in a zillion, um, billion pieces, whatever, while you're still pumping, you're still here, you can still do something to change, right? It's right. So, but the thing is, that's something we can do now. Right now, we can organize according to the lessons that have been given to us, and we ensure that those lessons are incorporated within the children, right? Everybody. And, and it becomes more, it becomes like, all right, now we're looking at where everyone's at. What are people good in? They show you what they're good in when they're very small age. And we got to be looking at like, okay, you, you like doing that? All right, we're going to make sure you do that. You're going to build, you're going to be the next architect. <laughs> right? We got to be looking at it like that now. Go look at other successful societies they ensure that the children have head starts. I mean, we need to be, you know, and with our status, what our status, which um, the Sheik was kind of speaking on too, we'll be in a position to underwrite. See, I'm not, yes, you see the book. That's the part that we all need so we can get things going. We get finance in, meaning, um, you know, these are for the, uh, you know, for the books of the nation, right? But also it's for education. But the other things, right, it's so that, you know, that part can start to, that department can bring in things so that we can move on to other things. Because we do have what is what be known as underwriting capabilities. But we're going to underwrite. Well, you see everybody's going broke around you. But then they're going to go to the point where all the cities and everything's going to be broke. And they're going to, you know, do a little cleanup, you know, a few knuckleheads here and there few rebellious, you know, supremacists on both sides, black supremacists and white supremacists, they're going to clean up. All right. It's not a lot, but they're going to do a lot. And then, you know, the COVID thing, like the prophet says, is going to hit people a little bit. Ooh, right. But in the meantime, between time, right there, it's going to go back to whose rightful owner is. Now, without going so far on that road, but understanding. So what we do now sets up how well we organize our father's land the vast estate. So what we're talking about for us being uh, to be beneficial to production is understanding what makes this thing run around here. No one said that you have to go out there and build the refinery plant, but see, some of y'all need to be looking in that area. Don't look at like, oh, I need some money to do that. No, you don't. You need the will to do that. Money is falling, what you consider money. Allow it to fall because now you can see the world through BRICS, which is Asia uniting, it's all about commodity. The reason it's falling over here and they can't do anything, they shut it down because you know who, uh, show it back up. You know, we put him out there. Like he said, dude, the correct way. And, you know, you are really who you, we are really who we say we are. So these things got to fall away and fall into place. But what do we do in the meantime? Wait, like we waiting on a check or something? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Because when it clicks back on, it's going to be in our favor. But that determines on how many competent Moors understand what they got. Understand how to rule civilization because they're going to be looking for your plan too. They're going to be looking for that citizenship plan. They're going to be looking for that how to make people better plan because everybody going crazy around the world. <laughs> but anyway, but it's going to be a lot more than that because like um, when you understand commodity money, you'll really begin to understand the natural forces. So it's not just gold and silver. It's copper. It's aluminum. It's tin. It's, um, it's trees. It's corn. It's wheat. Right now, we need to be thinking about who, who knows how to get a whole uh, thousand acre, wheat. who knows how to hook up wheat right now? I don't even know how, what to call it, farm wheat. <laughs> who knows how to farm wheat right now? Why? Because you need silos so you can store up that wheat. Why? Because that's a natural commodity sold around the world that people bid on all sorts of great stuff. See, it's going back 
to what is real. It's no longer in a fiat system of what is fake. Everybody's been screaming, we want the real, I'm the natural man, I'm the real blood man, you know, all that stuff back in the day. Remember that? <laughs> well, okay, that requires you to have a government, natural man. Some people, I, I, I don't need the temple, temple wars, you don't need to do this, do, 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 do. you know, we, I, I'm free, I didn't get my, well, where are you at? Where's your spot? Because we got the keys to North America. So where are you going to be floating in the air? Where are you a sovereign at? Because ain't no sovereign over here like that. Prophet number Jewel, he's the only royal prince. And we following all them orders. And he's still in his seat. So we're princesses and prince princes and princesses. Noble. But if you're talking about you a, a whole kingdom and sovereign thing unto your men, where is your army? Where's your gold? You better go read what it means to be that. If <laughs> you think you're that, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Some people out there with a bunch of talk and a bunch of feel good stuff. So accumulation of capital, thrift. Whoa, didn't the prophet just say something about thrift? To the young people, Morris Lee? Accumulation of capital, thrift is the foundation stone of effective economic interdependence. The individual must practice Frugal team. You have to be frugal. Engage in hard work, not soft half work. Hard work in what you want. And acquire the habit of wise spending. It's called budgeting, not spending over your means, not looking on TV, talking about, oh, I can do it because it's credit. Credit is gone. You better have something because the only credit left out there is social credit. And without morals, you'll be broke. So what habits have we acquired within our spending as a people that we now need to look at so that we can get healthy again and spend according to the conduciveness of our people? Where is the, uh, uh, the farmer's market in our area? Because if at least you can be able to take what you grow in your backyard, come down to a controlled farmer's market, used to be called a grocery store, this is what we're doing up here, too. I'll tell you this part. This part's fine. So what we're doing is looking to get the get this um, warehouse up here. It's an old, um, one of those big old shopping centers, right? Or a grocery store. And we got it. it ain't going to be like they had it. Uh-uh. Because when you walk into the produce, you're going to see uh, these little booth areas, just like when you go pick up the little booth area that got all your plums and stuff and got all your nice uh, 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 produce and stuff right there, you're going to see a brother sitting right there in the tournament talking about, yeah, blah, blah. And you can bargain with him all day on what you want to get. He's going to give you the bombest tomatoes and you're going to know dang sure it was grown with love. You're going to scoot all over there and go and get some of them sweet potatoes from grandma. Grandma, give me 20 because I love sweet potatoes. You understand? This is us thinking about how to run our own thing. And what, how did they get in there? They ran it. And it's on a rotation because maybe there's other people in there. But guess what? That thing runs, though, every single day. And, it, right, got to have some place to eat because guess what? They're not going to feed you anymore, you guys. Some of y'all going to give your, your name away for a morsel of bread because you think I'm kidding right now. They're not going to feed you because there's nowhere in the contract that they got to feed you. Where? Where, where? where does it say that? Welfare. Don't, don't bring that up now. That was a design directly from Colin Tell Pro given to the blacks in the inner city and the poor whites. To keep you now uh, on the tit of the state. Take away the father and his responsibilities to be a man and figure it out and give some bread to the woman. Mm-hmm. Now, ain't nothing can be figured out. Yeah, that's wrong. Because it can be figured with our lesson. Because the prophet always told us to be thrifty. He already was an example with grocery stores at every temple, laundry mats. There was a bank there called Binga Binga Bank. He was given insurance. Emily Eel was writing insurance for all the members. 
So why are you paying to a fund? See? Hmm. All right. So let's go a little further. Let me in the civics of it now. Let me see where we're at. Okay. So why spending? So living with living within is means as to enable a savings of a portion of the product of his labor. You know, there's there's mathematical calculations on how to do that from that sentence. It's called algebra. But anyway, and we need to get our mathematical symbols in our and our math on how we spend money. We so scared. Uh, 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 of stepping up to the plate. Some of y'all know math. Act like y'all don't know something. We're so used to uh, pushing a button now and this instant communication don't mean instant your budget gonna be good. You can see everybody on YouTube and, and TikTok don't mean that, you know, your, your bank account gonna be nice. All you can be up on there with your social everything and knowing everybody's business two ways to Friday ain't gonna make you not live under your means are at the means in which you're at, because half of the people is in debt. And if you're one of them, it means you don't know how to live in your means. And no one told you how the accumulation of capital goes. It ain't about spending and showing what you got, like a fool on a video. Man, that's there to entertain you. Don't get the entertainment caught up in real life. Thrift is the foundation stone of economic interdependence or economic security. That's why it's being taught right now. In industry, wealth is the product of savings. <laughs> right? So wealth is a product of savings, but it, it also depends on what you're saving. You save a lot of money today right now and, and not have a lot of wealth. Why? Because of, because of the fiat nature and the fractional system in which they created, all based upon the petrodollar, okay, uh, which is owned by Saudi Arabia, and they just broke away from the U.S. with it all and said, all right, you know, uh-uh, we done, we done. It's over, we done. Somebody showed up at my doorstep and knocked on my door. Let us know, uh-oh, <laughs> let's just put it that way. So in industry, wealth is the product of savings. So what are we saving collectively as a people? This is why we can't, the other part of what I was speaking about earlier. So when the prophet of Ali says, you know, put in for the emergency fund, fund is like a 401k, a fund is insurance. Put in for the such and such fund or the upliftment fund, right? These are wealth building products or means to, to, to accumulate something. And when it gets to a certain point, that savings, you then do what? You move that, you move it in a more stable form of wealth. So when things are balanced, and the things right, then we go pick up some silver, we go pick up some gold. But what do we, else do we do though? We ensure our system, since we are the landowners from this point of view, right, you have to do a few things to set your system up so everybody else can then come up under it. Let's put it that way. So what do you think when we set up systems like our industries that take care of like farming? We're actually looking at how to take care of all the farmland. When we set up industries of exchange, most of you need to be up in, into money exchange right now. Why aren't you looking at that? Always into Bitcoin. You're all into Bitcoin. Why don't you go look at money exchange? You understand? And help me build the, the natural, you know, the Morris exchange back. That's what's popping. What we're we exchanging. Well, so I already told you, natural energy. <laughs> kind of look at it like that. You know, trees and all that stuff, all that good stuff. So you set up for the, the thing now. You got to set your industry up. You got to set your mind up. And you need to be specialized in natural wealth. 
Who can tell me about diamonds? Who can tell me to look into a rock field and say that right there about, you know, 50 feet below this, we're going to find rubies because of this is what's laying on top. Huh? Just like it says, really? Because there's people like that that can do that. Why aren't you looking into things like that? See, we need to look back into controlling the rivers. Controlling rivers. It's a means of transportation. Letting them dam up certain things. You know, I don't know about all that no more. Anyway, a bunch of stuff, a bunch of things. It is secure in part by the elimination of waste. See, that is such a great line right there. It is secured in the part by elimination of waste. And it's going to go into something else. And the correspondence conservation of materials and labor practiced by both individuals and groups. Let's go back up to this elimination of waste. This is that part right here where we were kind of speaking on earlier in the beginning or spoke on it sometime. The elimination of waste is what we do when we come into the temple and we get these we get these lessons. We eliminate waste, things that weren't good for our condition, such as being Black and with a Black mentality. We eliminate that waste and we pick up the duties of love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. And each one of those has about infinite possibilities in where those can go, right? Such as industries. This is the things that we're talking about right now. And without the elimination of waste within your own character, you can never really get the superior character because you're still relying on the old character that you once were. Too prideful to let it go. Too prideful to say, I need a little help. Oh, you know, or whatever, right? These, you know, elimination of waste can go into many different aspects because to have a healthy community or a healthy industry, it has to eliminate the waste of the people who always disbelieve that it can't be done. You ever notice the, the believers always group up into a circle and then create something fantastic? Where everybody sat back, oh, we don't know about that. Yeah, well, it's called an ark. Oh, we don't know about that, Noah. Well, you know, it's okay. Me and my family and my other folks over here, we finna build this thing. Okay, whatever, whatever. And then when they want to come knocking after it's all shiny and beautiful and people, you know, I want to come in. Well, you know, did you get an invite? Calling card. Security. <laughs> so anyway. Relationship between management and men. 